This story begins in 1910 with the Flexner Report. The report proposed the appointment of full-time clinical faculty to advance scientifically rigorous education and research in medicine. Dr. William Goldie, a respected department member, enthusiastically agreed and recognized the need for philanthropic support to propel the department into the era of academic medicine. In 1918, he persuaded his patients, Sir John and Lady Flora Eaton, to donate a major gift to establish the first endowed chair at the University of Toronto and in what was then the British Empire. Under the leadership of nine Eaton chairs, the department has thrived and now ranks among the top worldwide. It's really an incredible honor to hold the Eaton Chair position. I come after a long line of very accomplished chairs. I'm very proud of the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto. What I did that was the most significant, I think first, was merging the Toronto Western and Toronto General, and second, having the Department of Medicine act as a unit and not separate departments of medicine. For me personally, holding the chair was a great honor. When I was recruited here in 1971, the clinician scientist was put on the endangered species list. And so we implemented in 1993 the clinician scientist training program, and it's now abundantly clear that it was very successful. Many of the faculty members in the department today are graduates of the clinician scientist training program, and they are serving as mentors and supervisors for the next generation generation of clinician scientist trainees. I was really proud to be the first woman chair after 85 years of the existence of the chair. I feel that one of my most important contributions was developing the concept of doing strategic planning for the Department of Medicine so that we could strive to be better, know how we were going to get there, and see what accomplishments we had achieved and then moved on to the next. Probably the most important thing that we've done is we created a portfolio in the department for mentorship, equity, and diversity and charge them with collecting data, understanding what's going on, creating a plan and implementing the plan. The biggest cherry on top of being the chair of medicine is being aware of and getting to celebrate the accomplishments of our faculty. There isn't a division of the Department of Medicine that doesn't have faculty members who are world-renowned. We had members of our department approached by the UK government when they were running the London Olympics about how do they avoid an epidemic. We have numerous people consulting at the federal and provincial government here in Canada. We have many members of our department who are on the front line of Ebola. There are just unbelievable people who have had a big impact either locally, globally, or nationally. These are superstars. This is the cream of the crop. In order to understand the legacy of the Eaton Chair, we have to go back to when it was endowed in 1919. The legacy was a statement that academic medicine was important and that that had the ability to improve the health of our patients through cutting edge research and education. The original Eaton Legacy Endowment really was an investment in the health of Canadians. The Eaton family can be justly proud of their role in advancing medicine in Canada. So one of the things that we really are focusing on as we celebrate this hundred years is how can those of us who benefited from the last hundred years pay it forward for the next hundred years. Since that Legacy Endowment 100 years ago, the Department of Medicine has launched the careers of thousands of physicians who have gone on to provide extraordinary care, teach the next generation, and make scientific breakthroughs. Thanks to the Eaton Chair, the Department of Medicine will continue to be at the forefront of medical education and discovery. The story is far from over, and we can't wait to see what the next 100 years will bring.